Hi again, everybody. Welcome back. This example 9.1 is going to be our first application of our definition of momentum um, and impulse as applied to a baseball, or you can say a softball. All right. So we have a 0.144 kilogram baseball. So let's just go ahead and write that down. The um, mass of our baseball. Mass equals 0.144 kilograms is moving with an initial velocity moving towards home plate of 43.0 meters per second. Now notice right here that we have this little black line with the X and, and the arrow indicator right here. That means that that is going to be our X axis and if X is pointing that way then we're going to call that positive. So it's moving the initial velocity <coughs> is initial velocity equals negative 43.0 meters per second. That's our initial velocity because velocity is a vector. Um, and it's moving in the negative direction initially until the batter strikes it. Um, so the bat applies a force, the average force that we're going to use. It's not the total force or the force at any one point, but it's the average force over the whole time the ball is in contact with the bat, and that is 6.50 times 10 to the third newtons. All right, so that's 6,500 newtons that the bat is applying to the ball right there. And it's applied for a very short period of time. Time equals 1.30 microseconds. That M right there, oh no, I'm sorry, no, that's, a, that's an M. Uh, that's a milliseconds. Micro is a, uh, is a Greek mu. Uh, milliseconds, all right? So that's a thousandth of a second right there. So let's turn this into seconds. Uh, oops, M right there. I forgot to write the S. Milliseconds. Well, 1,000 milliseconds equals one second. So we divide that by a 1,000, and that's going to be 1.3. Oh, I'm kind of just writing the same thing, but in scientific notation, um, times... 10 to the negative third. I'm trying to write with my laser pointer again. Times 1, 10, 10 to the negative third seconds right there. That's a negative, negative third. All right, so sorry, that's all kind of, uh, kind of all crammed in there. But it's a sh very short period of time, 1.3 thousandths of a second. All right, the force is directed towards the pitcher, as the, we will call the positive direction, and we've indicated that. So here's our axis, and that way is the positive direction. Um, so we're going to keep the, the force positive. I'm going to put a vector over that force right there. It's a positive force of 6,500 newtons. And we want to find the impulse acting on the ball. All right? We also want to find the final speed of the ball. Um, and we can do that using momentum. All right, so what I'm going to do to create some more space right here is to take my, uh, my work area and shrink it down, since you've probably already written all this stuff down. And we've got a little bit more space to write. So I'm going to do like that. Okay? So, A, the impulse on the ball equals what? Okay? Well, we know that impulse, um, our definition of impulse equals force, in this case, the average force, force average times a change in time. All right, well, I think we have both of those values right there. All right, the force is going to be 6.5 times 10 to the third newtons multiplied by our time, which is 1.30 milliseconds or 1.30 times 10 to the negative third seconds. And that's going to be our impulse that is applied to the ball. It's going to be in the positive direction because our force is in the positive direction and, of course, time is directionless. So let's find out what our impulse is applied to the ball um, using our mom, uh, momentum uh, impulse theorem. Okay, and I get a value of 8, oops, let me do that, 8.45, that's our impulse. But 8.45 what? Well, impulse, we know, is a change in momentum, all right, and momentum is mass times velocity, so that's going to be kilogram meters per second. Kilogram meters per second, and that is our impulse that is applied to the ball in that period of time right there. Let's now find 
Part B, the final speed of the ball. All right, the final speed, V final, equals what? That's what we're solving for right there for part B. Okay, well, we do know that the initial velocity, V initial, equals negative 43.0 meters per second. And we know that the mass of the ball is 0 0.144 kilograms. If we know that the change in momentum, the change in momentum, also known as impulse, equals 8.45 kilogram meters per second, um, meters per second, we should be able to find that final velocity of the ball because change in momentum equals momentum initial, oh, sorry, momentum final minus momentum initial right there, which means mass velocity final minus mass velocity initial. That's our change in momentum right there. Let's solve for our velocity final and we can plug in and, uh, uh, and get our, our, our velocity final. So I'm going to add over this mv initial right here. So change in momentum plus mass times initial velocity. And then once that's added over, I'm also going to divide by our mass, right? Because that gets uh, v final all by itself. So divided by our mass. So we, all, we have this written for final velocity right here. Let's just plug everything in. Uh, change in momentum goes 8.45. I'm going to leave the units out for the sake of space. Plus mass, which is 0 0.144 kilograms, times the initial velocity, which is <clears throat> negative 43.0 meters per second. You notice we have this is a change. This is an initial momentum that's going to be negative, right? The ball is going this way, in the negative direction, divided by, now, our, uh, the mass of the ball, 0 0.144 kilograms, and that's going to give our final velocity, which should be positive, uh, and it's going, um, it's going back out the way that it came from. So what do we get for our final velocity? I get that the final velocity is, in fact, positive. It is 15.7 meters per second. Final velocity right there. Now, it's not very fast, but keep in mind that the problem says that it is bunted or hit softly, so it's not going to be flying out at a, um, at a great rate. That's accounted for, for the, in, in the average force. If it's struck like a, a home run swing, that, that force is going to be much greater, and uh, probably the time that the ball is in contact with the, uh, the bat is going to be much lesser as well. So that's going to be a uh, result in a greater change in momentum. But this is our final velocity right now all used by um, using our impulse momentum theorem and our definition of momentum as being mass times velocity. So that's example one. If you have any questions, make sure you come see me, and I'll uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.